Hey guys, welcome to my brew tube. Hi, welcome to my brew tube. Today we are going to be brewing um, a New England IPA. It's going to hopefully be nice and hazy, hoppy. This is my first proper home brew, so please be nice to me and yeah, let's get on with it. brew today I'll be using the beautiful grain father connect I'm gonna go ahead and fill her up with uh, 15 liters of water and while that's getting to my temperature I'm gonna start sanitizing some shit get it all clean Woohoo! I figured I should get a hose pipe because otherwise it would take ages to fill up with like jugs or whatever I bought a connector thing for the tap and um, so I could connect a hose pipe onto that then when it arrived, uh, it didn't fit onto my kitchen sink, so I have to attach it onto my bathroom sink and fill it up from there. But luckily, my bathroom's only next door. And we have a lift off. Um, I've actually changed my mind to a bit more water. 19.19 litres. That's with the calculations of my um, grain bill and probably a better idea to have a little bit more water because quite a high percentage of my grain is uh, flaked, flaked grain. So it will be quite a sticky mash anyway. And then I can just do a bit less on my sponge water. Yeah. Um, so I'm using the Grainfather app. Um, I've put in my, my recipe um, onto the website and I've got it on the app. So now uh, we are brewing New England IPA. Um, it's told me to add the water. Um, I've already done that. So now I'm going to press set and that's going to start heating. And um, we'll come back when that's ready. While uh, the water heats up, I'm going to like prepare all my sanitizer and stuff. But I've got the Chem Sands, kind of like Star Sand, just a different brand. Um, so I'm gonna fill up the spray bottle with this, just makes everything a lot, lot easier. And then also for my little bits and stuff, because I need to sanitize my fermentation bucket. What I'm gonna do is kind of fill this with sanitizer, all the little bits like my airlock and my mash one, just any other little bits I'm gonna put in there. Uh, I'm sorry, it's non-rinse sanitizer. Yeah, I'm gonna wear the protective gloves because this shit's corrosive and it will hurt your hands. Um, 10 ml of this to 5 litres. Oh! Oh! See, that is the amount you need for 5 litres. I'll do 20 and then put 10 litres in. That seems better. Gotta go get the holes back. Okay, so we're on 52 now on the water temperature. I'm literally just going to dump all my stuff in. I'll dump that in there. Put the airlock in there. And then with this, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone because I need to sanitize the fermentation vessel and you just reuse so it's bit more eco-friendly, let's say. Oops. So the water's heated to 66, so now we're ready to add the grains. So we're just gonna add in the grain basket. When that's in there, I'm just gonna make sure that this is extended all the way. And I'm just gonna add I'm um, just going to add the grain stopper so that no grains go down that hole. 640 grams of flaked barley. That's 400. I think it's always a good idea to taste your grains as well because then you get a bit of a better idea of where the flavor profile's coming from. Like wheat, 430 grams of this. And then I've also got 5.1 kilograms of pale malt and 
640 grams of flaked oats as well. We'll see how this goes. Um, it could make it for quite a sticky mash because a lot of it is flaked, but we want the high protein for all the haziness. But I am putting some, I am putting some rice hulls in there as well, um, just to try and minimize the stickiness of the mash. Obviously, um, that won't affect like the flavor or anything. So it's so good. I'm just going to add um, a teaspoon of um, calcium chloride and half a teaspoon of calcium sulfate. I'm going to add my grains. We'll mix together the oats and stuff. I want to add it really slowly just to make sure, again, because it is going to probably be quite a sticky mash, I want to add it gradually and make sure there's no flower pockets, no stickiness we don't want it too sticky i'm gonna probably use like a scoopy scoop Something. do i have one i do wow i already smells so good and i'll add some some crispy flakes baked in a buttery crispy flake mm. oh my god i f i don't understand the people who don't like the smell of like it's fucking great. Then I'll give it a little mixy mix. Little paddle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Sit. So pour it. Oh, it's a hole in Oh no, there's not. Yay, look at, look at that. Oh, there is a hole in the bottom. Uh oh. Baked and I'm buttery. Whoa, this is sticky. Wait, I'm gonna give you a closer look. Sticky, sticky mash. And I've still got grains to add. It's okay though, we're getting there. See, so you just gotta work it. That's why you get a long handled paddle. Y'all thought it was too dry, but look at this. We're doing just fine and it smells bloody delightful. I wish I had a metal mash paddle. That'd be way better, but. I don't have that much money because I am a student who is trying to pursue, pursue her career, uh, pursue her career brewing beer whilst on a fine art course. Mix in um, porridge. Mmm, yummy. Drain all over the floor, but that's fine as well. You can't make omelets without cracking eggs, and you can't make beer without spilling just a little bit of grain on the floor. Now this is a lot of mixing. Really gotta get in there. This is such a flimsy fu- Okay, we're getting there ladies and gentlemen. Mm. I guess I'm gonna climb inside this thing. I wish I was one of these grains. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm feeling more confident now. We want it all nice and mixed. Combined, no dry bits, amazing stuff work, yeah. So now I'm ready to start mashing and recirculating. So what I want to do now is add this top perforated plate. Although a little tip I've seen because I've had a little play with this before. Because it's got these little like silicon bits around it, obviously to stop any liquid passing through but they're not very well attached, obviously for cleaning purposes. And if it's dry, if it's going in dry, <clears throat> it will like slip off. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm just gonna wet the rim a bit, a bit. Oh dear, I didn't want it to be one of those videos. Just take the grain stopper out. You wanna fit this and it should just, oh, that's going well, sick. You want it to just sit on top of the grain bed. You don't wanna push it down too much, you know. That wouldn't be nice. This is the overflow outlet. Pop that on there, like so. Put the lid on. Oh, hey. Can fit circulation pipe. So I'm attaching the recirculation hose. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Make sure that that's on nice and tight. What we're gonna do now, press set. <gasps> and it's pumping. Wow. This is sick. So now it's uh, recirculating. Um, it's fine if a bit goes down the... Oh, maybe a lot is. 
So the thing that we didn't want to happen happened and we've got a bit of a stuck mash situation but uh, it's okay. I mean it's not. I'm quite upset. Not much we can do now. Um, we're just gonna... I don't really know what we're gonna do. I mean it's kind of working. Um, uh, the extraction of sugar probably, well, it won't be as good as if it was pumping through but I've kind of come up with a solution. I, I saw this coming from the beginning but I just hoped uh, beginner's luck. And so I've just taken the lid off purely for ease, like it's still heating, it's still got the timer on. But to stop it from overflowing, what I keep doing is um, turning the pump on and letting this bit fill up just under the draining outlet. So it's kind of working a bit better. So then I leave it at about there and then let that drain off and then put another load in. So obviously that's not as efficient as it would be if the pump and the circulation bit was working. But gotta work with what we got and hopefully it'll be okay. It just might not be as strong as we hoped, but I still have a good feeling about this. Ready for sparging now, so I'm just gonna remove this. Uh, oh, I just smudged my eye. So I'll take a zillid off the handle. Pull it out, lift it up, let it all drain out, which could take some time. It's trying its best. Just heating up my sparge water in like hot water um, that my work lent me. Um, that's the only thing about the grain farm, amazing system, but yeah, it isn't. Uh, I can't speak. Yeah, it is an all in one brewing system, but you will need something else to heat your sparge water. Um, I mean this kind of thing is perfect You could use a kettle if you want but depending on what scale you're brewing on like that would take kind of long so I'm using this I don't have my sparge water so I need 13 and a half litres um, And all that sparging does is it's the extra sugars that you would have missed on mash Oh, another cool thing is I can track my how many liters I've done. So I've done one liter. Yeah. Two liters. Pretty good that it has the feature of tracking how many you put in because I would definitely lose count like hundred percent. One live. Got a nice a boil. It's my cauldron. 26 minutes left. So we're just gonna wait. The boil's nearly finished, so while that's finishing off, it's got like six minutes left. I'm just gonna weigh out my hops. I'm doing 50 grams of Amarillo, 50 grams of Simcoe, uh, just at a hot stand. Got Amarillo. Simcoe. So nice. And um, for the hops, I've just got these little muslin bags. So what I will do, I've just got a bowl of sanitizer here. 
It'll suck. That will just keep that nice. We are nearly done with the boil. Do one. Okay, stop. Uh, so now we're just going to put the hops in there. And I think I'm going to put the pump on as well. It can recirculate and I'll get into contact with the lovely hops. So it's been 15 minutes. I'm going to remove the hot bag now. It. And I'm just going to press pump while it's still hot so that a hot water can go through it first. Well, the blue pipe connected to just the normal water tap and then the red one will just um, get rid of the hot water that's cooling the water. Now I'm just transferring it to my fermentation vessel. We want to do it at quite a slow speed and from a height to get some aeration in there. Mm, stir it up. Um, I've put it down here because this is where I'm going to let it ferment. I've got American East Coast Ale Yeast. It's good for New England IPAs. This is full of sanitised water. Airlock, this will let air out, um, but won't let anything in. And this baby's ready for fermentation. Mm -hmm. Sleep well, my child. Three days later. Please ignore this mirror. Um, so, so, so. Mm -hmm. So. I just broke my hydrometer. <laughs> I'm gonna add my dry hops today. So I wanted to dry hop uh, three or four days into fermentation. It's kind of like three and a half days because I finished brewing in the evening of the th of Thursday and it's morning now. Okay, so it's still fermenting. Um, so I've got my hot bags in the sanitizer. Oh. 100 grams of Galaxy and 100 grams of Citra. One week later. Today is bottling day and I've stupidly left cleaning all these bottles until bottling day. To save money and recycle, I decided instead of buying bottles, I would save up some and get people to save them at work for me. But now I've got the boring ass task of cleaning the labels of 42 bottles, which is so long. I've done four, it's taken me like three hours. No, it's not. I put them all here and I've just got them soaking. That literally took an hour. Look at my hands. It's now time to get sanitizing them. Bottling day is so boring. So I'm just gonna rinse them with my sanitizer. Then go bottling, yay. That is done, daily. Got all my bottles primed. I'm in sugar. Oh my God. Got my bottle caps in a sanitizer. Let's do this. Bit of tape on my, the first one I bottled. This one. Everything's sanitized. All the bottles have been sanitized and primed. Now we're just going to bottle. There we go. Ah! Look, it's bottled. I'll try not to get excited after everyone. I could do with an assistant to like pass me stuff. I hope I have enough bottles. The better hell I'll be gone when the morning comes. Ha <laughs> ha! Who's the queen of here? Me, 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 me. Seven down, a thousand to go. It's like the chill on my children. I'm a proud, proud mom.
And then as well, once I get some labels made, it's gonna look freaking rocking. I'm gonna sell this shit. Four pound a bottle. Actually, I could do it for more because it is limited edition because I guarantee I will never be able to make this beer again because there were so many mishaps. Oh, this lava! <laughs> I'm just made a bit and I'm a bottle in it. I'm literally so happy. I could cry. No, I'm not going to. Do you want to come and have a closer look? Hi. Fill her up, please. I've finished bottling. Put you on this size bottle and then um, I have one of these pop top bottles. Um, Put the last of it in. Um, so let's come back in about two weeks. Hi. Um, so it has been two weeks since bottling day. And hopefully they've carbonated. I haven't tried any of them yet. So this is gonna be an honest reaction. You're trying it at the same time as me. Well, you're not. Um, I'm gonna taste it. If it's good, then good. If it's not, then I've sold you all a lie but let's not be pessimistic it's gonna be great it's gonna be fine fuck it let's try mm, this one oh let's see okay oh we got a fizz gonna... okay i mean the color is it's quite dark we've got head on it well, that's good Oh, okay. So we've got some nice sweet peach on the nose, which is, which is nice. It's almost like a little, I can't put my finger on what it is. It's definitely a sweetness to it. You know what? That's not bad. Like, like that's not bad at all. Mate, for first brew, I'm pretty stoked with that. Um, it's not as like juicy as I wanted, but that's fine. It's fine. It's my first brew, guys. Like it's hazy. It's yeah. It's good. Oh, it's so annoying. There is like this kind of tart sweetness coming through but it's only coming through the tiniest tiniest bit and if that was just coming through a little bit more mm. i'm just extremely gassed with the carbonation on it like bro like look at that like like head retention head retention on that guys from the high protein yeet that is beautiful like this is actually beautiful it looks more like an amber ale, like a darker pale. I was hoping it to be a bit lighter, but... <laughs> oh, excuse me. Wish I could draw out this. It sounds weird to say sharp sweetness, but like a sweet kind of citrusy note, kind of like orange, orangey, peachy, like stone fruit flavors, like maybe like nectarine and stuff. There's that little like, mm, bit. I'm glad I've made mistakes and it's not turned out completely perfect and how I wanted it because then I'd get probably like overconfident and be like, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bit of rare beers all the time. I am literally like five weeks older since, I mean, I think I started brewing in January. I'm like five weeks older now. Five weeks more knowledgeable. <laughs> oh, I'm actually happy with this. I'm proud of myself. I made a drinkable beer that doesn't taste like ass, which is, which is pretty, pretty darn good, considering all of the stupid mishaps I had, stuck mash, breaking my freaking hydrometer, spilling shit, just spilling a lot of stuff, breaking lots of stuff, messing about. And it's a solid 6.5, 6.6%, 6 so, you know, not, not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. It's a learning curve. This is my first beer. All there is, is now is room for improvement. So, you know, chin chin. Thank you so much guys for watching and bearing with me and 
putting up with this interesting journey through my beer brewing and cheers to you guys thank you so much and stay tuned for the next brew which will probably still be quite clumsy but it might be a bit more smoother in it so yeah peace out mother liquors drink beer because it's good for you i might have a baby bell now next brew um hmm oh yeah <laughs>